Hello friends, welcome to Tech Greens. And in today's video, we'll see what is Lambda architecture in the big data world. So there are two prominent architectures currently uh, available in the big data uh, space. One is the Lambda architecture, which is kind of a de facto. And uh, uh, most uh, of the systems are designed with Lambda architecture. And the another architecture pattern available is the Kappa architecture. So in this video, guys, let's see what is Lambda architecture. So Lambda architecture is a data processing architect architecture uh, pattern, uh, which is designed to handle massive quantities of data in the big data, uh, data processing world uh, by taking the advantage of both the batch data processing and the stream real-time data processing. So this is the architecture which takes into account uh, both the mechanism of data processing to handle massive quantities of data. So guys, uh, in a very simple term, uh, this architecture pattern covers or mandates that both the data processing paradigm like batch and stream would be used to serve the data to the downstream systems. So guys, let's try to understand this from uh, this architecture uh, diagram. So here you can see the, whatever the data is coming to the system uh, by different sources that will go on the two different layers. One is the speed layer where the stream processing is happening. Another one is the batch layer, which kind of uh, contains the entire master data uh, for the system. And then uh, there is a third layer, which is a serving layer, which kind of merge the data from the speed and the patch layer to eventually create a data mart for downstream systems or uh, even if there are ad hoc queries that will be all uh, presented by the service layer. So guys at a high layer, high layer we can see that the entire Lambda architecture talks about two processing uh, paradigms. One is the speed where the stream processing is happening. Another one is the batch layer where the batch processing is happening. And batch layer is the truth source of records. Uh, we'll see uh, what are the different layers and what are their roles in the next slide. So guys, let's try to understand the uh, layered view of the Lambda architecture. So here we have three layers. First is the batch layer. So whatever new data is coming to a system, it will go uh, to the batch layer. At the same time, it will go to the speed layer as well. And uh, uh, at the batch layer, we would have uh, the immutable master data. It is the archive or historical data which is kept at the batch layer. And here the batch processing will happen, which will, you know, uh, compute the data or process the data and try to create the, you know, uh, pre-compiled pre or pre-computed views, which could be used by the uh, serving layer to answer the queries or to uh, present the data. Uh, similarly, uh, at the speed layer, uh, the data is processed at uh, real time and here the incremental views are created which would be used by the serving layer and serving layer is a layer which merges the you know computed data from the two layers to uh, present the final data to the underlying systems so uh, as we have discussed uh, lambda architecture is a data processing architecture designed to handle massive quantities of data in the big data space by taking the advantage of both the batch and the stream processing uh, data paradigm. Uh, the, uh, the approach uh, used here in this architecture tries to balance the latency, throughput and fault tolerance. So if you see, we have one batch layer, uh, which is, is a slow moving or a cold path uh, for a data in the system. And then we have a stream or a speed layer, which is a hot path. So it is trying to create a balance between uh, a latency from the speed layer and throughput from the batch layer. And then we have a service layer which combines the two. Um, so guys, uh, as we know that Lambda architecture uses the hybrid approach 
uh, and it has got three layers as we have discussed in previous slide that uh, the lambda architecture mandates or governs that there would be three layer of data processing one is the batch layer uh, the batch layer uh, typically uh, the the underlying system used for creating batch la batch layer is hadoop is a de facto technology and uh, it is the batch layer is a location where all the data is just all the data is stored. So entire master historical or archival uh, records are kept in the batch processing layer. Uh, it's also a cold data path because it keeps the archival or the slow moving data uh, or say the entire data into the system. Then second is the second layer is the speed layer, what is called as speed layer. It is meant to process the current or the real time data coming to your system and this is the hot data path so whatever uh, data is coming to a system it will be processed by speed layer in the real time and it will process by the batch layer in the batch mode so the data is uh, collected and then a batch run will happen at a scheduled time and you know pre uh, computed views would be created but at a speed layer in the real time processing will happen and incremental views will be created in the real time or near real time then the third layer is the solving layer. Uh, this is the layer which is meant to, uh, you know, answer the queries or any kind of other queries or uh, present data to the downstream systems, etc. This is the final data presentation layer, and this layer merges the data from both the batch and the speed layer. So from batch, it will be able to uh, achieve the throughput, and with the speed layer, it will be achieved the uh, latency. So the idea here is to create the right balance between the throughput and the latency. So guys, let's discuss what what are the other things happen at the batch layer. What are the different things happen at the batch layer? So batch layer actually pre-computes result using a distributed processing system, which is 99% uh, Hadoop HDFS world. Uh, the batch layer aims at you know perfect accuracy by being able to process all the available data when generating views. So this this layer is meant for doing the heavy lifting in data system and it is meant to process the entire master historical data to create the pre-computed views which could be used by serving layer to present the data. Uh, output is typically stored in the read-only database with updates completely replacing existing pre-computed views. Uh, that's why Hadoop is comes into the picture. As the updates doesn't happen to the Hadoop, it's like uh, right once. As we have noticed, as we have discussed, Apache Hadoop is the de facto standard batch processing system. So now, in now we look at what are the different things happens the speed layer and what is the purpose of speed layer. So speed layer processes data streams in the real time or real, near real time and it doesn't require to process the complete historical or metadata. It only processes that smaller pieces of data which is coming between say two rounds of batch. Every time a batch will run it will have to process the complete amount of data. But if, if speed layer will only process the data which is coming between the two batches so it only process the delta uh, this layer is meant to minimize latency uh, you know so that data uh, it can be processed quickly as and when it is coming to a system which helps business user which help business user to adjust decision making and respond quickly to the any kind of uh, trends emerging out of that uh, stream data processing or near real time data processing uh, one important fact that we need to remember that uh, whatever is processed at the speed layer is also copied into the bash layer because bash layer is the entire system of records. So everything is copied into the bash processing layer. Uh, and another thing to gain the uh, you know, low latency at the speed layer, once the data is processed in the speed layer, it is clear, deleted. Uh, so that we can create way for the next incoming data. So nothing is uh, persistently kept at the uh, speed layer. 
and we keep on creating the incremental views at the speed layer. So guys, now look, look at the middle and the most important layer, which is the serving layer. This is the layer which is meant to present any kind of data to the downstream systems. As we can see, as you can see in this picture here, it is merging the views created from the batch and the views created from the speed layer together to, to answer any kind of ad hoc queries. So output from both the batch and speed layers are stored in the serving layer and it responds to the ad hoc queries you know by merging the uh, batch and the uh, pre-computed views from the batch and uh, incremental views from the speed layer uh, the important the importance of this layer is you know if you have a layer which can combine data from the cold and the hot path it achieves uh, to do the data presentation and reporting with very low latency so the results could be achieved in a much more uh, faster time so that's the whole idea of having keeping a service layer uh, guys this is all about the highlights of the lambda architecture a very thoughtful architecture in terms of providing the right balance between the you know high throughput and low latency but there are a couple of criticisms of lambda architecture or we can say disadvantages first one is it is inherently complex definitely it is complex because uh, processing is happening at two places the batch and the speed and the data needs to be constantly merged between the two systems uh, we need to keep track of what is the delta needs to be processed at the speed layer uh, what are the different uh, incremental views needs to be created at the speed layer uh, the entire amount of data needs to be uh, processed every time you know batch runs at the batch layer so there are complexity attached with this architecture another thing is as we need to process the same data at two places what are the incoming data uh, coming to a system needs to be processed by the speed layer and by the batch layer itself so we'll have to maintain two uh, line of codes you know two code bases needs to be maintained one for the batch processing one for the stream processing and uh, what are the business logic you will have to change for that data processing it needs to be done on two places so there's always uh, a difficulty in terms of keeping the two code bases or two business code tracks in sync and this is also one of the uh, disadvantages of a, uh, or a criticism of lambda architecture so guys that's it in this particular video next video we'll look the another emerging or the current uh, architecture of time kappa thanks for watching have a good day bye bye